Thank you, Roy, and I would like to thank everyone that is staying late after our meeting and uh, also uh, um, not going to the reception on time. So, um, first of all, we are really doing this for the patients. This is uh, for a disease setting that has been underserved for a long time. We don't have any FDA approvals in this setting. And we hope that at least one of these arms of the study, as we're moving forward, will be a new standard of care for the group of patients that we selected. So without uh, further delay, uh, this is uh, the front page of the protocol that you'll see in your institutions, I'm hoping, soon. Um, and this is the snapshot from the Nature uh, manuscript that was published two years ago reminding us that we need to act on all those genomic alterations that have been discovered. Some of these targets are being serviced in this first iteration of the master protocol, and we hope that many more will be uh, in the protocol in the near future. So what is the goal of the master protocol? In a few words, we wanted to do two things at the same time. One to screen large populations of patients that currently are not being screened for molecular alterations. Let's not kid ourselves. This is not a standard of care. Many of our patients we heard from um, earlier today from Bonnie Adario, they're not being screened molecularly at many of our institutions, community hospitals and academic sites as well. So this is going to be the largest repository of molecular screening genomic alterations for squamous lung cancer in the refractory setting. Then we wanted to use this information to guide the patients towards potentially useful therapy for their tumor and potentially also get drugs approved by the FDA. We want safe and effective drugs going to patients fast. So, and this is the bottom line of this slide here. So I'm gonna also try to simplify this next very wordy slide. So the endpoint for both the phase two and the phase three component of this trial is progression-free survival. The phase two component will uh, target a sufficient progression-free survival um, difference between the targeted therapy and the standard of care to allow us to proceed into the phase three. And this is true not only for the targeted therapy arms, but also for the non-match arm, as I will show you in a minute. For the phase three component, we're looking at proving that the targeted therapy arm is superior to the standard of care arm for uh, both um, uh, the non-match and the targeted therapies. And we would like to also see an improvement in overall survival. We have secondary objectives in the phase two and the phase three component. We're looking at response rate. And we also have inserted into the phase two component the allowance for looking at a superior um, agent that will allow for accelerated approval. Then we're looking at toxicity, and we're developing a number of correlates to look at response and resistance uh, to these therapies. The eligibility is very straightforward. We're looking for patients with squamous cell lung cancer that has been exposed to frontline platinum-containing regimen and are now progressing. They have to have um, what we consider a good performance status, less than two. They have to have adequate organ function. And the patients that had brain metastasis have to have stability after treatment. This is, I think, the money slide for today's discussion. Many of our patients, of course, will be screened here when they recur after their frontline therapy, and the testing is uniform. It is the Foundation Medicine Next Generation Sequencing Panel accompanied by immunohistochemistry for one marker. And I'm going to go into the details in a minute. 
once the patients have completed their genomic screening and we have received the result, this will be communicated to the site that is enrolling the patient, and then the patient will be assigned to the most suitable arm for their tumor and randomized between standard of care and the targeted therapy. Here is the final iteration of this protocol as we are planning to uh, activate it, hopefully in the next few weeks. As you already heard from Roy in his discussion, um, we will have about 50% of the patients on this study with the current um, prevalence of the markers going into the non-match arm of this trial, and this arm is a very exciting therapy indeed for the patients, anti-PD-L1 monoclonal antibody against chemotherapy. The four targeted arms of the trial, I'm going to go a little slow because I had some science inserted, but we don't have enough time. So first arm is targeting patients with PIK3CA mutations. And the agent that we chose for this arm is a beta-spurring PA3 kinase inhibitor, JDC0032. It's an oral agent. The standard of care chemotherapy is docetaxel. The second arm of the targeted therapy uh, is targeting CDK46, and the agent we chose is palbocyclib, or PD0032. 332991. The selection criteria for this arm is cycling D1, cycling D2, cycling D3 amplification, or CDK4 amplification. The third arm is targeting FGFR amplified tumors, FGFR mutated tumors, or FGFR gene fusion positive tumors. And the drug selected for this arm is AZD4547, an FGFR through 3 selective FGFR DKI against standard docetaxel. The last targeted arm of the study is targeting uh, HGF. It's an HGF monoclonal antibody in combination with erlotinib against erlotinib monotherapy. And the selection criteria for this arm is CMET expression. And here is an all-inclusive table of how the treatment will be for each arm. As you can see, all our investigational therapies are oral, except for the anti pdl one arm, where the treatment is given every two weeks, and it is intravenous. And the combination of rilutumumab anti-AGF monoclonal antibody, which is given intravenously every 21 days in combination with oral erlotinib. Of course, docetaxel is uniformly our standard of care arm for all these. The trial um, has already gone through a lot of um, work and a lot of improvements over the months. Many people have worked on this um, protocol, and many of these are in this room, and there are many that are not in the room as well. So uh, with our initial meeting being back in March of 2013, where um, all of us, including industry representatives, FDA, NCI, gathered all in a room in Washington, up until today, I think we've made a lot of progress. The trial is already approved by um, NCI consensus review, and it's going through CIRB as we are speaking. So we're hoping for activation really soon.